Okay, so now that you've created an AutoCAD web account, uh, let's go ahead and launch it and see what the difference is. If you go ahead and use the link that I've provided, uh, it might automatically sign you in since you were previously signed in to the Autodesk website. If not, just go ahead and use the credentials that you've created and sign yourself in. You're gonna see two things uh, off to the left-hand side of this screen. You're gonna see AutoCAD Web and Mobile and Add Storage Provider. I have added my Google Drive, which will allow me to use drawings or save drawings to my Google Drive. Um, for now, I'm just going to use this AutoCAD Web and Mobile. I'll show you the Google Drive in a second. Um, but I just want you to come over here and click on New Drawing. When you create a new drawing, it prompts you for a file name. Go ahead and call this one Practice. And then it asks you for your drawing units. We have Metric and Imperial. Metric are our millimeters and meters, and Imperial are our inches and feet we're always going to choose Imperial Units. Go ahead and select that and hit Open. And it's going to load up our drawing interface. It's going to look very familiar to what AutoCAD looks like on our desktops. You're going to see your X and Y axis. You're going to see the green and red lines. You're going to see grids. Uh, it's going to be very familiar to what you're used to. As always, let's go ahead and type in Z enter, A enter to zoom all. It's gonna zoom in a little bit closer for us. You can also use your center mouse wheel to zoom out or zoom in by rolling up or down. If you don't have a mouse, um, Z enter, A enter is your best friend. It'll zoom all for you. Uh, you can use this icon here for zoom extents. Um, there's a few different ways you can zoom in and around our drawing. If you do have a mouse though, you can hold your center mouse wheel down and pan it. I would highly suggest getting a mouse for AutoCAD. Uh, but other than that, it's very familiar how to navigate around our document. Over here to the right hand side, you're going to see our different views. Usually these are down here in this bottom corner where it says model or layout one or layout two. Things again that you're familiar with. We're going to go back to the model tab. We're going to do most of our work in here until we're ready to print. Um, we don't really need the Views tab after that. Uh, our Properties palette, or our Object Properties, um, what we're currently creating. Um, if we were creating a line, a rectangle, a circle, right? these would be the properties of that object. Or if I had an object and I selected it, we'd be able to see these properties of that object. For our layers, uh, if you remember back in the beginning part of CAD, we had the SM layer, we had reference line layer, we had hidden line layer, uh, hatch, text, dimension. Uh, we had quite a few layers and we wanted to put our objects in the proper layer so we could either turn them on or off or view them or freeze them uh, at appropriate times. Um, right now we're just going to use the zero layer and the def points um, for our practice problem. We have blocks. Uh, blocks are drawings that are already created that we can insert into our projects. Um, similar to XREF, XREF is a previously drawn drawing. Um, it stands for external references, something we want to refer to but not truly load into our project. I'm going to go back to the properties tab and we're going to draw some stuff. Down here below, you'll see that we have our five draw commands. There are not that many. Uh, we have rectangle, circle, arc, line, and polyline. Um, we're missing quite a few that you're used to. But if you remember, every object is either a line or an arc. If it's an arc that completes itself, it's gonna be a circle. But everything is either straight or curved, as I always say in class. And so we're gonna be able to draw anything that we want with these five tools. On the annotate tab, uh, we have a tool that allows us to measure some things, a little revision cloud. Uh, we have our dimension, our text, and our multi-leader. Now to use these, you remember we have to set them up beforehand. Um, the way that we set those is by choosing them up here in these properties. We can choose um, our dimension style to be certain sizes. 
we could choose our textile to be certain sizes, and we could choose our multi-liter to be certain sizes. We cannot change our font. We cannot um, modify our dimension style to be exactly as we want. This is the web interface, so it's, it's limited in what it can do, uh, but we're gonna use it uh, to the best of our ability. And then lastly, we have our modify tab. Uh, we can move objects, uh, we can copy them, we can fill it, we can trim, extend, mirror, offset, um, rotate, scale. We can do some match properties and stretch. This one here down on the bottom, uh, stretch, is gonna be something that we use in architecture quite a bit. And we'll get into how to use all of those tools in just a second. Uh, but let's go back to the draw panel and let's draw a line. Um, just like in AutoCAD, we can use our keyboard to input where we want to start. Let's go ahead and type in one comma one and hit enter and it'll start at the point one one. So one in our X direction, one in our Y. Uh, you'll see that we have these little boxes popping up and moving as we change our cursors around. These are called dynamic input. Uh, the first box is the length of my line and the second one is the angle at which it will be drawn. If I want a line to come directly over to the right, I could also uh, mouse over this green polar snap. Uh, if I typed in five for my distance and I hit tab, uh, it's gonna lock that length in at five. Now the angle at which I go, um, I can either click down here where it's on the green or I can type in zero. So that was five tab zero. If I wanna go straight up, even if my cursor isn't directly over to the side, uh, say I want to go up two and a half units. I can type in 2.5 tab. And if you remember, 90 degrees go straight up. So I'll type in 90 and hit enter. Right. I'm going to hit escape. And I'm going to stop that line. Uh, it's very similar to uh, polar drafting when we were in AutoCAD. Uh, I can go ahead and click on the line tool again. And you'll notice that if I hover over this endpoint, uh, the object snap automatically pops up. I can then hover over this endpoint and create uh, a nice right triangle. If I wanted to come down to this midpoint though, the endpoints are all that are snapping. Well, it used to be a shift right mouse key, uh, but in the web interface, you just have to right click. You could choose your snap overrides and then choose midpoint if you wanna to go to the midpoint of that bottom leg. As you're drawing, you'll see that our snaps, our snap overrides, are the same ones that we're used to. Uh, none, nearest, intersection, node, parallel, perpendicular, tangent, uh, you can read them. But uh, mainly in architectural drafting, we'll be using endpoint, midpoint, intersection, and perpendicular. If I wanted to draw two walls that were perpendicular to each other, um, we're going to be using that one quite a bit. To save a drawing, uh, you have to save it before you exit the web page. Uh, if you try to exit the web page, it's going to tell you that changes may not have been saved. We do not want to leave. You want to hit cancel. Right. Up over here in the top right, we have our save. Since we've already named it practice, if you just click on save, it's going to save that to your home device or home drive. Not your H drive like school, um, but if you click on home, It'll save it to your home drive on the AutoCAD web interface. We can open up that file here. I could delete it. I could download it. I could duplicate it, move it, rename it, and open it. One thing though is I cannot move it to my Google Drive. You have to have your Google Drive set up before you do any of your classwork. To go ahead and map your Google Drive to your AutoCAD interface. You're going to want to click on this Add Storage Provider icon. And then you're going to click on Add Google Drive. When you're adding your Google Drive, make sure that you uh, are either logged in to your Google account or uh, you can use another account and type in your student ID number. That's going to add your Google Drive after you put in your password to your uh, AutoCAD interface. If I come over here and I click on Google Drive, it's going to load up all of my content. 
One thing I would do if I were you is create a new folder and call that one um, distance learning or AutoCAD web or some other file name or some other folder name that you're gonna always be able to recognize. I'm gonna call mine AutoCAD web. And then inside of that folder is where we could create our new drawings. Let's go ahead and create a new drawing in there now. The new drawing that I want to do uh, is architectural practice. And again, we're going to use the imperial units. Now, when you create an architectural drawing, we don't want to use inches. A lot of our drawings are going to be a lot longer than 12 inches. They're going to be uh, in terms of feet and in inches. So we need to set up our units. To do that, up in the top right hand corner, we have a gear, and that gear usually represents settings. If you click on your settings, we can click on the units tab, and we're going to change our linear format from decimal to architectural. Architectural allows us to type in feet and inches. We're going to leave our precision right now at 1 16th of an inch. We don't need to change our angular units, but let's go ahead and see what some of the other settings are. For tracking, we're going to keep polar tracking on. That was that green little bar that popped up when I was at zero. It'll also come up at any increment of 90 degrees, so 90, 180, or 270. For object snap, uh, you could set up certain ones to be default. Um, I like to keep uh, endpoint, intersection, extension, uh, and parallel turned on. Not parallel, perpendicular. If we uh, were drawing in um, mechanical drafting, we'd have circle on. We're not going to have too many circles on our drawing. I'm going to keep that one on in there anyway. Uh, if I put on too many, then my cursor wants to snap everywhere. So I can always right click and use that snap override uh, if I need to in my drawing. On the navigation, uh, this is our zoom direction. Standard is what I like, where I roll up on my mouse wheel, it zooms in. Down on my mouse wheel, it zooms out. Let's go ahead and hit done for our settings. And we can draw a basic home. With the line tool, if I started uh, my cursor at 0, 0, I might bring my uh, first wall of my home up, uh, maybe 28 feet. To put in 28 feet, I can type in 28 and then apostrophe. We need to put in that apostrophe to denote feet uh, compared to inches. The default unit of AutoCAD is still in inches. So if I don't put that apostrophe and I just left 28, it's only going to come up 28 inches, which is what one foot no, two feet, four inches, a lot less than 28 feet. Since I'm currently up on my um, polar tracking, if I just hit enter, it's going to come up that 28 feet straight up. If I keep my polar tracking going to the right uh, and I want to come over, say, 20 feet, I could type in 20 apostrophe and hit enter. We'll use this here to be our uh, garage. If I come up a little bit, uh, maybe 12 feet 6 inches. I could type in 12 apostrophe 6 and hit enter and my line will go up um, exactly as I need. I don't really want to draw a whole house with you right now. That's what we're going to do during the, uh, the class. But if I came over to the right some, down some, over to the left some, down. If I want to come down to where I originally started, if I mouse over this endpoint, and then move my mouse over to the right. It's going to give me that extension. So I don't really have to know the distance. I just need to know where I want to end. And I can click and then end our cursor back at the origin and hit escape. Architectural units uh, will take some getting used to. Uh, they are determined in feet and inches. Um, but with more practice, we're going to get a little bit more comfortable with them. Go ahead and draw more objects. Um, try to annotate your object. Since we are drawing in such a large unit, being feet, um, we were going to want to change our dim style, our dimension style over here, to architectural 12. 
Uh, that's going to be um, the right size when we're viewing our objects uh, such on a large scale. If you click annotate and then dimension, uh, you can dimension from endpoint to endpoint and you'll be able to read your actual dimensions. If they were any smaller, uh, architectural six, they might be too small for us to see, uh, or even architectural three. Um, those are really hard to see. Right? You'll notice on that last dimension, I just clicked on the line and it dimensioned um, the length of that object. It's one of the quicker ways to dimension. I like to force my dimensions to go exactly where I want by clicking on those endpoints. Um, just to practice that you or I uh, will prefer later on. But again, play, uh, draw more objects, uh, modify, trim, um, extend. You might need more objects to be able to do those. Uh, you'll notice that when selecting objects, you can either just hover over them and click. Uh, say you want to delete this. Or if you try to green crosshatch by clicking once, and clicking again, it doesn't do that on this web interface. You must click and drag to get your uh, green crosshatch or your blue fence. So play around, get comfortable. Uh, only by use are you going to get better in this program.